Hi student, I am Dr. D. S. Thavre. Now I share the screen of today's lecture in front of you. Please wait. Welcome to the fourteenth lecture of course number tab three five four. Title of this course. That is uh, this is this of field and horticultural crops and their management. Okay, so in your today's lecture, we will discuss about Phytophthora blightosus seen in field crops. Okay, so first of all, we discuss. About blight disease seen in pigeon pea. Okay, so the first occurrence of Phytophthora blight on pigeon pea crop in India was reported by Williams et al. in 1966. At Indian Agricultural Research Station, New Delhi. Okay, means first of all, the Willem scientist seen the blight disease on pigeon pea at the farm of Indian Agricultural Research Station, New Delhi. Okay, so now this disease. It's seen in major pigeon pea growing states, for example, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, and other uh, growing tracts of the pigeon pea. Okay, so losses due to the Phytophthora blight disease is near about twenty to thirty percent under favorable weather conditions. Okay, especially in uh, short duration and uh, highly susceptible variety of the pigeon pea. Okay, so now we discuss about which type of the symptom produced by the blight disease or blight pathogen in pigeon pea. Okay, so you see these uh, photographs. Okay, so this blight disease. Or blight pathogen produces the damping of symptoms in uh, younger seedlings or just uh, growing uh, seedlings. Okay, means damping of disease seen in uh, pigeon pea seedlings. So infected seedlings immediately. Dies or suddenly dies. Okay, so this is the wilted plants. Sorry, this wilted seedlings of the pigeon pea seen in the first photographs. Okay, so totally infected seedlings is dies because the initially the brownish spots may be seen on the cotyledon. leaf of these uh, seedlings so these symptoms also be seen on the younger uh, seedlings or younger stem of these uh, seedlings so these uh, infected seedlings is totally collapse and dies within four days okay so this type of the sim symptom generally seen in the nursery bed area of the pigeon pea okay or these symptoms develop the damping of symptoms okay so this is the infected uh, plants and this is the healthy one plants okay then we discuss the which type of the symptom generally seen on the older plants or mature plants okay so one or two month old plants the infected plants shows the water soaked 
translucent spots may be seen on the leaf of this uh, plants okay so you see this what also put a translucent spots initially seen on the older leaf of the or older side of the this uh, pigeon pea plants okay so this water soaked spots turns to the brown or maybe black in color so this uh, brown to black slightly sunken lesions seen on the leaf portions okay so under favorable conditions the number of the leaf get infected by this fungus and infected uh, necrotic leaf or dry leaf is immediately defoliated from this uh, pigeon pea plants okay so this is the symptom generally seen on the leaf portion then under favorable condition or further infection of this pathogen these pathogens spread from leaf to the petiole and petiole to the stem portions okay means on the surface of the stem initially water soaked brownish spots may be seen on the basal side of this stems okay so this uh, brownish spots girdle around this uh, stem portions and just exceed in the upward directions okay so infected plants having the leaf so these uh, leaf lose their turgidity and become desiccated okay so during the severe infections these lesions increases in size and uh, girdle or encircle the stem causing uh, the infected stem may be spreading okay so at the severe infections these uh, infected lesion just in uh, girdle around this uh, stem portion and exceed in the upward directions so this main stem or some branches of this uh, plants which uh, break at this point okay so you see this uh, break this uh, stem portion from this uh, point of infections okay so above the foliage or maybe leaf or maybe flowers is totally dried from this uh, above uh, this uh, point of infections okay so in the arable conditions this plant may be totally dies okay so this is the symptom generally developed by the phytophthora blight pathogen in the pigeon pea okay so in the advanced stage of the infections sometimes the large galls seen on their stem surface especially at the edges of the lesions so this is the galls generally seen on the main stem portions or some of the cankerous growth may be seen on this infected stem portions okay so this pathogen infect the foliage and stem but uh, these symptoms not develop up to the root surface okay so this is the symptoms developed by the pathogen in the pigeon peas okay so you see these uh, symptoms develop in step wise that is water soaked spots then leaf blight symptoms then stem blight then uh, stem blight in the advanced stage means maximum portion of the stem and some uh, branches to be infected and showing the um, blight uh, brownish uh, uh, lesions so this uh, infected stem just to break from this point of infections 
and sometimes these uh, stem gall infections may be seen. Okay. Okay, so this is the symptoms develop at the stilling stage, and this is the symptoms develop on the older plants. Okay, then causal organisms that is Phytophthora dress layering form a species of Kajani. So this Phytophthora pathogen introduced uh, under favorable conditions and to produce the two types of the spores. One is the sexual spore, and another is the asexual spores. Okay. Means so this fungus develop the mycelia, and this mycelia is totally haline, branched, and sinuosity. Okay, so this mycelia develop the sporangiophore. So at the tip of the sporangiophore, generally sporangia is developed. So this sporangia germinate under the favorable conditions and to produce the zoospores. Okay, so generally zoospores and sporangia. Acts as a secondary infection to spread the disease from one plant to the another plant. Okay, means sporangia and zoospores reproduce by asexual method by forming the asexual spore trees. Then, in the absence of the main host crop, this fungus goes to the dormant conditions and to produce the zoospores. Means. The female gametangia and male gametangia comes together and to form the oospores. Means anthridium and oogonium fuse to each other and finally develop the oospores. So these oospores reproduce by sexual method. Okay, so you see this uh, sporangia and sporangiophore. Okay, so this is the sporangium. And this is this sporangium, sorry, this sporangium core. So means this sporangium fruiting body generally produced or formed at the tip of this sporangium core. And this sporangium core generally emerge out after the germination of the mycelium. Okay. So this is the sporangium. Okay. So this is the branching structure of the sporangium uh, and sporangio spores. This is the zoo spores, and this is the zoo uh, spores formed by fusion of the male and female gamete. Okay. So you see the another uh, picture of this uh, sporangium and sporangio four. Okay. So primary infection. That is, whose spores and dormant mycelium survival in soil and also on the infected plant debris. So this is the primary source of infection. Means this fungus is a soil borne as well as seed borne. And secondary infection that is sporangia and juice spores spread. Through wind or rain flashes, and further the spread of disease from one plant to the another plant or one field to the another field. Okay, so this is the perpetuation. Then we go to the control measures about this phytophthora blight. So first of all, collect and destroy affected plant debris properly. Then select fields with no previous record of the blight incidence. Then avoid showing a pigeon pea in the field with low-lying patches 
that are prone to the water logging because this uh, phytophthora blight infection is initiated in the waterlogged soils so avoid this uh, waterlogged soil for cultivation purpose to the pigeon pea then prepare raised bed seed bed and provide good drainage facilities then uses wide inter row spacing that is a 30 cm by 45 cm then the seeds generally treated with widow mill at the rate of 2 g per kg of seed then this uh, seeds is again treated with the trichoderma viridi at the rate of 4 to 6 g per kg of seed suppose the blight symptoms may be seen on the stem portion or may be seen on the leaf portion so immediately protect this pigeon pea of plants from this uh, fungal infection by applying the fungicides that is a ridomil at the rate of uh, 0.2% at 15 days interval so starting our application of this fung uh, fungicides starting from the 15 days after the germination because this uh, pathogen infect to the younger seedlings as well as the uh, mature plant so that's why first spray should be applied over this uh, younger seedlings of the pigeon pea 15 days after the germination okay so in this way you can uh, eradicate these uh, phytophthora dressleri forma species pejani in the pigeon pea okay then second disease that is a seedlings blight of castor okay so this castor is also infected by this uh, phytophthora pathogen and develop the number of the seedlings okay so this uh, disease generally seen in the all the growing tracts of the castors especially in the madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh okay so this disease is severe in low lying and badly drained fields and such infected areas that uh, destroy the castor crop is near about 30 to 40 percent seedlings particularly those which are the small in height or just the uh, uh, in the seedling stage okay so this phytophthora fungus develop the symptoms on the both the surface of the cotyledons leaf means uh, initially this fungus infect to the germinating seeds and uh, germinating seedlings so that's why initially infection that is a dull green round color spots generally seen on the cotyledon leaf so these uh, patches generally spread to the point of attachments means uh, this fungus spread to the cotyledon parts to the younger seedlings so that's why this infected leaf is totally rotted and uh, hang down along the main stem okay so this infection generally seen at the initial growth of this uh, castor plants okay so this fungus further spread from leaf to the petiole and petiole to the main stems so that's why the initially the yellow to brown spots may be seen on the leaf portion of the castor plants so this fungus spread and become concentric zones of the lighter or some of this uh, darker brown color seen on the leaf portion so that's why 
the major portion of the leaf and leaflet showing the blight appearance because the number of the such concentric brownish spots coalesce to each other so that's why the maximum portion of the leaf is totally infected by the fungus and showing the blight appearance okay so such infected leaf is uh, defoliated uh, from this castor crops okay then this fungus also be develop the symptoms on the well developed stem portion of these uh, castors so that's why this brownish uh, lesions is gathered all around this uh, stem portions so that's why these uh, affected young seedlings of the castor is totally dies and wilted okay so these plants is uh, easily blown Uh, through the winds from one place to the another place okay so this is the infection generally seen on the younger seedlings of the castor uh, through the uh, phytophthora pathogens okay so this phytophthora parasitica this fungus is responsible to produce the seedlings blight disease in the castors so already we discuss in uh, phytophthora blight disease of the pigeon pea so etiological parts of this phytophthora parasitica is same as uh, the phytophthora blight of the pigeon pea okay so this fungus produces the cynocytic hypi and this hypi is totally haline haline is colorless colorless uh, mycelia generally developed by this phytophthora parasitica and this uh, mycelia grows and to develop erect uh, sporangiophores so at the tip of the sporangiophore the sporangia generally develops so this sporangia germinate to produce the abundant juice spores okay so this juice spores and sporangia is generally developed or formed by asexual methods and this uh, spores is uh, acts as a secondary infection to spread the disease from one place to the another place or one plant to the another plant okay so this fungus is also produces wo spores means these wo spores formed by sexual methods by fission of the uh, male and female gametes okay so this is the perpetuations then management that is removal and destroy the infected plant residues then ill drained and low lying localities means water logged soil and ill drained soil is not uh, used or uh, prefer for uh, cultivation of the castor crop then seed dressing with trichoderm avidity 4 g plus metalaxin 3 g per kg of seed so in this way you can protect the seed from this phytophthora infections after the uh, emergence in the soil then soil drenching with uh, copper oxychloride at the rate of 3 g per liter or metalaxin 2 g per liter so this uh, fungicides is the drench around the only limited infected uh, or only few infected uh, plants of the castors so this uh, method is also effective to restrict the further infection of the pathogen from one place to the another place or one uh, place of the soil to the another place of the soils okay then third this is that is a blank sorry black shank and leaf blight of two bag okay so this is this this is is found in many tobacco growing countries in the world especially uh, united state of the america then uh, india then some parts of also other countries so this is 
disease is the most common disease occurs in many parts of the india such as the andhra pradesh tamil nadu gujarat and uttar pradesh so that's why losses due to the uh, this uh, disease is about 30 to 40 percent okay then we discuss about the symptoms of this uh, lip light seen in the tobacco okay so you see these photographs so these photographs indicate the number of the young tobacco seedlings is totally wilted or some of these uh, yellow plants generally seen in particularly roots in specific site okay so the infected seedlings shows blackening of the roots as well as the stem at the ground level means initially the woos spores already present in the soil and this woos spores directly infect to this uh, young uh, seedlings of this uh, tobacco means uh, growing uh, seedlings of the tobacco so initially infection generally seen that is a uh, blackish lesions is uh, seen on the young seedlings of young stem of these uh, seedlings so these uh, blackish lesions is further exceed to the point of infection means may be exceed in the upward direction and may be exceed in the downward directions okay means these infections develop the symptoms on the stem portion as well as the root portions okay so these infected uh, plants having the leaf so these uh, leaf also develop the some symptoms that is the water soaked up spots generally seen on these uh, infected tobacco plants so this uh, infected leaf gradually blight appearance means uh, this uh, lesions is further spread to the entire surface of this uh, leaf so that's why blight symptoms majorly seen on the infected tobacco plants okay so the infected stem become stribal so that's why this uh, infected plants is totally dies or totally wilted okay suppose this uh, infected uh, wilted plants uproot from this field and show the stem portion so initially the blackish uh, sunken stem generally seen okay and such a stem is split so blackish discolorations generally seen inside the pithy tissue so you see this uh, infection of these pathogens inside the infected uh, root portions means this pithy tissue is uh, totally infected by this fungus and become black in color means outer surface as well as inner surface of this infected uh, uh, roots as well as stem portions become black in color okay so in this way the pathogen spread from this place to the this place this place to the this place so this uh, infected uh, plants is uh, totally dies or wilted in specific uh, uh, site of particularly fields okay then causal organism that is phytophthora parasitica variety nicotiana so these uh, pathogens attack to tobacco plants and develop the leaf blight infection or black shank infections so this phytophthora develop the sporangia and woos spores okay then we discuss about the disease cycle of this phytophthora parasitica variety nicotian okay means 
this is the infected uh, tobacco plants so initially this uh, infection generally develop from this point of infection means initially blackish uh, spots may be seen on the stem portion just above the soil line so this infection just exceed in the upward direction and maybe downward directions means the stem portion as well as root portion is totally infect and showing the black lesions so this uh, infected portion is split and show the pithy tissue so this pithy tissue become totally black in color okay means after harvest of this uh, tobacco plants from this field some of the infected leaf or stem or branches or root portions remain debris in this soil so this uh, dormant mycelia become survival by forming the oose spores or by forming the climatospores so this climatospores and oose spores germinate under the favorable conditions and to infect to the root portions of the younger seedlings of the tobacco okay so this is the primary infection to the younger seedlings of the tobacco so these younger seedlings become infected and showing the number of the symptoms okay means the primary infection takes place through the climatospores or dormant mycelia or maybe oose spores present in the soil and initiate or attack to the root portion of the younger seedlings or this uh, infected uh, stem and root portion formed the sporangia and juice spores so this juice spores and sporangia liberated from this uh, infection point and just deposit on the another uh, leaf of the tobacco plants or maybe uh, deposit or pollen on the another plants uh, maybe leaf or maybe stem portion so in this way spread the disease from one place to the another place okay so this is the structure morphological structure of the sporangia and juice spores and this is the oose spore bicellular or two cellular oose spores so this oose spores reproduce by formation of the or fusion of the male and female women and this is the sporangia Develop at the tip of this uh, sporangio pore. Okay, then the control measures that is the uh, plant debris should be collected and discarded. The seedling showing the blackening of the root should be discarded and only healthy seedling should be planted. Means uh, you separate the infected seedlings and healthy one seedlings. in the nursery bed areas so you can select only the healthy one seedlings for transplant in the mantles then cover the seed bed with a paddy husk or groundnut cell at 15 to 20 cm thick layer and burns this to eradicate the oose spores and climatospores present in the nursery soils so this soils is protect from this fungal spores by burning this uh, soil by covering the paddy husk or groundnut husk then provide adequate drainage, uh, drainage in the nurseries or drain the nursery bed with 1% borax mixture or 1 to 2% 0.2% aproxy chlorides so two days before the sowing means to soil solarizations or soil drenching with uh, borax mixture or copper oxy chloride so totally eradicate the climatospores and oose spores present in the nursery soils then spray the beds two weeks after the sowing with 0.2% metalaxyl or 0.2% captafol or copper oxy chlorides or 1% borax mixture so this uh, sprays repeat uh, after 10 days okay then uh, if possible the soil drench with 0.4% borax mixture or 0.2% copper oxy chlorides okay so in this way the farmer can eradicate or to avoid the infection of the phytophthora to the 
tobacco plants okay then last this is of today's lecture that is a black root rot of tobacco okay so this disease has been reported from most region of the world mostly with cool and moist climates okay means this uh, disease majorly seen in the tobacco when they cultivate or grow in uh, cool and moist climate having the water logged soils okay so this infected roots appears dark brown to black due to the presence of the large number of the black spores produced by the uh, fungus means initially the infection seen on the younger seedlings of the tobacco so these uh, younger seedlings in specific the stem portions so these stems portion are initially the dark brown to black lesions or spots may be seen on the stem portion above the soil lines so this fungus exceed or may be spread from this point of infection to the stem portion or to the root portions so this infected roots is totally rotted because this fungus suddenly develop the infection on the growing root portions so that's why this infected roots is totally rotted so that's why this disease is named as the black root rot means affected tobacco roots is totally rotted because initially the blackish spots or lesions seen on the stem portions so these blackish lesions is gathered uh, around this uh, roots portion as well as stem portion so that's why these roots is uh, totally rotted so these uh, plants is uh, develop the wilting symptoms as well as uh, yellowing symptoms okay means the above ground symptoms that is a stunting of the plants and yellowing of the plants okay so stunted plants often bloom early and the tobacco field takes on the extremely irregular appearance means in last stage of the infections this infected uh, plants is uh, totally wilted and not uh, produces the healthy one leaf okay so this is the symptom generally develop on the stem portion and root portions so this type of the symptom generally develop by the fungal pathogens that is a uh, thalopsis basicola okay so this fungus reproduce asexually by produce the two types of the conidia that is a uh, endospores means endoconidia and aleroconidia or aleropores so this aleropores or aleroconidia is also known as the climatospores so this climatospores produce in chain okay so this climatospores is dark and thick walled then endoconidia are produced in greater number than the climatospores so this uh, endoconidia generally 8 to 30 mm by 3 to 5 mm with slightly rounded end so you see this endoconidia okay so mycelium produced by this uh, halopsis basicola can be light brown to gray to light black in color and this mycelia is generally septed haline okay so this mycelia 
डेवलप दी एंडोकोनेडिया एंड एलोरोपोनेडिया और एलोरोस्पोर्स ओके सो परपिचुएशन दैट इज इंफेक्टेड प्लांट पार्ट्स डिप्रिज इन सॉइल देन क्लाइमेडोस्पोर्स मे बी प्रेजेंट इन सॉइल और क्लाइमेडोस्पोर्स मे बी सर्वाइवल इन इंफेक्टेड प्लांट पार्ट्स means in short primary infection generally takes place through climatospores and infected plant debris in soil and secondary infection that is elleroconeidia this conidia is easily disseminated in soil waters so in this way the fungus can spread from one place to the another place or one plant to the another plant through waters okay then uh, management crop rotation is recommended for the management of this disease because this uh, disease produces the climatospores so this climatospores is survival for many years in the absence of the tobacco crops so that's why crop rotation practices is also recommended then locate and approve the infected plants from the affected fields so this is the easily way to restrict the further infection of the pathogens or to restrict the primary source of infections then decomposing the residue from uh, some green manures cover crops should be avoided because they predispose roots of the resistant tobacco cultivars then soil fumigants such as chloropicrin can be useful for control in the seed bed and uh, uh, some uh, trisul fungicides that is uh, propicanazoles or some sterol inhibitors fungicides generally applied around the root surface of the infected uh, tobacco plants so pathogen may be destroyed okay then maintaining the soil ph near 6 so this uh, effective method for uh, also managing this disease then uh, growing resistant varieties okay so in this way the avoid the infection of this uh, helopsis basicola fungus infect to the roots of the tobacco leaves okay so in today's lecture any doubt please ask me okay now i end the today's lectures Thank you